Rose stood in front of her painting stand, holding a few colors in her hand. But things weren't going as she planned. Ah, uh, I think I should just paint the pig blue. No, wait. Maybe this will do. Maybe I should just take some of the pink color on my feathers. Ah, oh, this isn't working. Maybe I should call Mr. Fox. He might have some clue about what I should do. Hello. Hello, Mr. Fox. It's me, Rose. Oh, hello, Rose. How are you? I'm fine, Mr. Fox, but I do need your help with something. Do you think you could come and meet me? I'm at my usual painting place. Sure, I'll be right there. So, without a moment to lose, Mr. Fox got ready, got into his car, and drove off to where Rose was painting. Mr. Fox, I'm sure glad you're here. I tried everything, but nothing seems to work. What are you trying to do, Rose? Uh, I... I was just trying to get some pink paint, Mr. Fox. I'm not sure that this is the right way to do it, Rose. Well, what should I do? Hmm... Do you have an empty color palette? Of course. So, what colors do you need? I have red, blue... Yellow, black, and white. But I still need pink, green, orange, purple, and brown. Let me see. If we take a bit of red and a bit of white, we can make pink. Oh, it's just like magic. How about the other colors? Do you want to try? Why, yes, I would. But which colors do I use? Use your imagination, Rose. Hmm. I want to try red and blue. Okay. Wow! Now I can paint my violets purple. Do you want to try again? Sure! This time I'll try red and yellow. Nice! Now you have orange. It's beautiful, Mr. Fox. But I'm still missing green. Well, let's see. We still haven't mixed blue and yellow, have we? Right! This is a really cool shade of green. Now you can paint all you want. But, Mr. Fox, what about brown? Right. I almost forgot. Hmm. Let's try orange and blue. Yes, that's it. Oh, I really can't thank you enough, Mr. Fox. Don't worry about it. I really like your painting. You do? Yes. It's quite colorful. Well, thanks to you. Now... Whenever you're missing a color, all you have to do is try some together. All the colors that Rose once knew, when mixed together, turned to something new. Pink, purple, orange, and green. Something she had never seen. Yeah. 
It was past midnight. Mr. Sleeperson Koala was on his way home from work. The streets were empty and quiet. He was falling asleep. He tried really hard to keep his eyes open. When suddenly, the car stopped for no reason. And Mr. Sleeperson didn't wake up, as if it was the hibernation season. Mr. Sleeperson fell asleep on his driving wheel. The horn was too noisy for Mr. Fox to bear. He tried to block the sound out, but it was no use. He pulled his cap over his head, put earmuffs, but it was all in vain. He couldn't bear that horrible sound any longer. What a horrible sound! Who could it be this late at night? Mr. Sleeperson, it's you again. What brought him here this time of night? And he slept on the driving wheel. Excuse me. <gasps> Mr. Sleeperson. Hello, hello. Oh, that's enough! What? Where? What time is it? It's two in the morning. And you fell asleep on your driving wheel in front of my house. Oh, Mr. Fox. Hello. Hmm? Oh, my. It's 2 a.m. Oh, you noticed? So how can I help you, Mr. Fox? Help me? Help me? You're the one in front of my house. What am I doing here? I don't know. You tell me. I was fast asleep when I woke up to the horrible sound of your noisy horn. Oops. Sorry. I must have fallen asleep while I was driving again. My bad. Never mind that. Could you please drive all the way to your own house without falling asleep or bumping your head against the horn? Oh, sure, Mr. Fox. Have a good night. Good night. But as Mr. Sleeperson tried to start the car, it wouldn't start. Huh? Oh, man! Oh, Mr. Fox, wait! Help! Now what? The car won't start. Is that so? Can you check it for me, please? Of course! Mr. Fox walked back to the car and started to check it out. <coughs> Everything seemed fine. However, when he lowered the hood cover, he found Mr. Sleeperson sleeping in the back seat. He couldn't control his anger. He banged the hood cover. But Mr. Koala was still asleep. Mr. Fox decided to hop into the front seat and try to start the car himself. Huh? Mr. Sleeperson, your car is out of fuel. Who? Where? Your car is out of fuel. No way. Oh, what will we do now? You have to fill the tank. Okay. Mr. Sleeperson. What? Wake up. I'll fill your tank for you. I have some fuel in my house. Oh, that would be great. Mr. Sleeperson, it's all done. 
You can go home now. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Again. Nice spring night. Mr. Fox was sitting in his balcony, relaxing and drinking his favorite juice. When suddenly the phone rang. He wondered who would be calling him this time of night. Hello. Who is it? Mr. Fox, it's Rorik. Your Majesty, how may I help you? Well, Mr. Fox, I'd like you to come to my house early in the morning to discuss something urgent. Of course, I'll be there. After he hung up the phone, Mr. Fox went to sleep. He was supposed to wake up early. He wouldn't want to miss his appointment with the king. Next morning, Mr. Fox woke up and went to wash his face. After that, he got dressed and was all ready for his appointment with the king. He got into his car and drove off. Hello, Mr. Fox. One moment, please. Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived. May he come in? Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Your Majesty. Hope I'm not late. No, no. You're always on time. How are you, Mr. Fox? I'm fine. And how's our little Frisky? He's fine. A little mischief every now and then. You can never get him to stay in one place. But thanks to your bracelet, we can always find him. Saved us a lot of trouble. It's my pleasure. So tell me about this urgent matter. As you know, our jungle's population has been increasing lately. Indeed. Our population has increased. Yes. But it's getting harder to summon them all to the meeting every time. Hmm. That's why I called you, Mr. Fox. I need you to figure out a way for me to reach all the animals at the same time. Let me see. I need to think this through. That's okay, Mr. Fox. But please, don't take too much time. Don't you worry, Your Majesty. I will find a solution by tomorrow. As Mr. Fox got into his car to get back home, he thought all the while about the king's request. How could he help the king with his problem? With everything else Mr. Fox has faced, this might be a slightly bigger challenge for him.
Hmm, this is more challenging than I thought. Maybe a short break will help. Mr. Fox went back to his house and sat on his sofa. Since he can't think anymore about the king's request, he thought it would be great just to relax and watch his favorite TV show. Everything was peaceful and quiet. But then suddenly... I got it! Mr. Fox rushed back to his workshop. He quickly designed a new device. He carried the new device to his car, and off he went to King Rorik's place. Mr. Fox, I thought you were coming tomorrow. Did you solve my problem? Yes, Your Majesty. This is a solution to your problem. That's great! But what's that, Mr. Fox? This is a megaphone. I made it specially for you. Every time you need to meet the animals, all you have to do is roar into it. Mr. Fox, you're a genius. <laughs> but be careful, it's powerful. So make sure that no one is around you when you use it. Of course, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Fox. You're a great asset to all of us. It's my pleasure, your majesty. Goodbye, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox got into his car and waved goodbye to the king. He was feeling happy and pleased. The problem was now solved, and he was able to help out a friend once more. Spike the dragon always bragged about how good he was at photography. And all he wanted was just one little chance to prove to everyone how talented he was. It didn't take long before someone actually recommended him to be the official photographer of King Rorik the Lion's birthday party. All done and sent. Wow! That's a nice picture! Now we know who'll be our photographer. And immediately, Mr. Tiger sent a message to Spike. Oh! Finally someone recommended me! I won't let them down! I promise! And so, Spike started to train and practice some more. His pictures were beautiful! And he felt so happy. Everything went well until the morning of the party. Oh, today's the day! Finally! Maybe I should train some more. I done? While Spike was testing his camera, he pressed on something that changed his camera settings. Now all his pictures turned to white. Spike tried to change it back. He cleaned his lens and checked his filters, but all was in vain. What will I do? Oh, what will I do? I must go to Mr. Fox at once. Feeling so worried and sad, and with no clue what to do, Spike held his camera and flew off to Mr. Fox.
this early? Oh, Spike, it's you. Help me, Mr. Fox. My camera, help! All white, broken, help! Calm down, calm down. Please, come in. Spike followed Mr. Fox inside. He sat down and started to speak slowly. You know today's the king's birthday party. Yes, and you've been hired as the official photographer. Congratulations, Spike. Oh, Mr. Fox, it would soon be condolences. What? Why? My camera. It's broken. <gasps> broken? Yes, I woke up early today and tried to check it. But I found that every picture I take becomes white. Hmm. Have you checked the lens? Yes, and I re-cleaned them to be sure. But it's no use. And the filter? Everything. The lens and the filter. Hmm. Can I take a look at it? Mr. Fox held the camera and started to check the settings. Where could I buy another one now? Do you have a professional or digital one? I don't think you'll need it, Spike. I'll go straight to prison, right? No, it wouldn't be fair to send the most talented photographer to prison. They'll all laugh at me. Are you sure about that? Mr. Fox took a picture with the camera and showed it to Spike, who couldn't believe his eyes. Wow, it's back. Hmm. What was wrong with it? Looks like you accidentally increased the gamma. Oh, I forgot to check that. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Go now. See you at the party. That would be awesome. With that, Spike walked out of Mr. Fox's place. He went back home with a smile on his face. Sunny morning, as Mr. Fox was having his morning coffee and reading his newspaper in the balcony, his phone rang. Who could it be so early in the morning? Hello. Hello, Mr. Fox. It's Rorick. Oh, hello, Rorick. How are you today? Not very good, I'm afraid. Why is that? My piano. I tried playing it today, but it sounds weird. How so? I don't know. Could you please come and check it out? Sure, I'm on my way. Thank you, Mr. Fox. I'll be waiting for you. And I'll be right there. So, quickly, Mr. Fox changed his clothes. He took his toolbox and his car keys, got into his car, and drove off to Rorik's place.
Hello, Mr. Fox. One moment, please. Your Majesty, Mr. Fox has just arrived. Of course. Let him in. Come in, Mr. Fox. His Majesty is waiting for you. Good morning, Rorik. I came right away. Oh, you're here, Mr. Fox. Please help me with my piano. It's the only thing that comforts me. Don't worry, Rorik. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Fox started to check the piano. He tried playing a few notes. What is it, Mr. Fox? Is it broken? Mr. Fox, please answer me. It sounds horrible. It's not broken, Rorik. It just needs tuning. <gasps> Do I have to buy a new one? No, Rorik. It's very simple. I can tune it for you. Really? Thank you, Mr. Fox. I almost had a heart attack. However... Oh, no. Not that word. I'm sorry, but it might take a while. Oh, it's okay. I can wait. Okay, then. I'll get started. Please, Mr. Fox. Do your best. It's my everything. Don't worry. It'll be good as new. Mr. Fox opened his toolbox, grabbed a few things, and started to work. Beautiful. It sounds beautiful. Told you everything will be all right. I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Anytime, Rorik. And with that, Mr. Fox's work was all done. He waved goodbye and drove along happily. He had helped out a friend once more. For helping each other is everything you could ever wish for. One beautiful spring morning, though tired and sleepy, Mrs. Sharpie the Post Owl was on her way to Alfie's house to deliver a parcel. This is Alfie. Who is it? It's Chip, Alfie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. I sent you the new sheet music, which you have to rehearse. Of course. I will as soon as it arrives. As soon as Alfie hung up the phone, he heard a knock on the door. Good morning, Mr. Alfie. I have a parcel for you from Mr. Chip. Oh, thanks, Sharpie. I better start. Alfie took the parcel and got out the sheets. And then he went off to practice. 
Alfie the sea elephant was relaxing on the seashore, for it was his favorite place to be. He loved playing his violin, but suddenly the strings became so thin, and as he gave it a hard play, the strings snapped, and Alfie's face turned pale gray. Oh! Oh no! Not my violin! It's my one and only hobby. What shall I do? Hmm. Oh, I know. I must go to Mr. Fox. Alfie walked towards Mr. Fox's place, hoping that he could help and solve his case. Our star musician, welcome. Come on in. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Have a seat. Would you like some lemonade? Yes, please, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox came back with a glass of lemonade. He gave it to Alfie. Then he noticed his violin. Oh, what happened to your violin? <sighs> I was playing by the seaside, and suddenly the string snapped. What do you think I should do? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we can simply buy some new strings and change them. I already bought them, but I don't know how to change them. Uh, it's my first time. No problem. It's easy. Now let me teach you how to replace them. First, we remove the old string by twisting this till it's loose. Then, we pull the broken string out of its hole. After that, we twist the tuning peg on the other end and pull the other end of the string from its hole as well. See? Now the whole string is out. We insert the thin end of the new string into the hole of the tuning peg. Then, bend the string around the hole like that and fix its other end into the other hole. And there's the other string as well. Go ahead and play it! Okay! With his violin finally fixed, Alfie walked out the door. He went back to play on his favorite seashore. stormy winter night, when most of the animals stayed warm in their beds and turned off the lights. There was thunder, there was lightning, and Woody the woodpecker found it frightening. He knew he was in trouble, for his house will soon become rubble. Oh no! What am I going to do? 
I better go to Mr. Fox before things get worse. With a nice cup of hot chocolate, Mr. Fox continued reading his book when the doorbell rang. It was winter. No one would walk in the rain unless they had a complaint. Woody, what are you doing walking around in such cold weather? Hurry, come in! <sighs> Mr. Fox, I know it's cold. And I'm sure my problems will make you feel bored. But I need your help. Of course. Don't worry. Have a seat, Woody, and I'll get you a hot drink. It must have been terrible to go out in that storm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So, what exactly is your problem? My roof. It gets ruined by the rain. Oh. I keep fixing it every now and then. But now, every winter is a nightmare. Here you go, Woody. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So tell me, what happened to your roof? The rain makes it damp. Sometimes I fear it gets too damp. It might fall. Oh, you're right. That's a serious problem. Well, will you help me? Mr. Fox knew he couldn't stop the rain, but he couldn't let Woody's efforts be in vain. There had to be another way. Hmm... I have an idea. We need to guide the water off your roof. Hmm... But how can we do that? Well, we need to visit the jungle shop. But first, we'll wait for the storm to pass. Finally, the storm faded away revealing a bright, warm, sunny day. I think the weather is better now. Let's go, Mr. Fox! Mr. Fox and Woody hopped into the car, and off they drove to the jungle shop. So, uh, what will we buy from here, Mr. Fox? A slope roof. A roof? But how will we transport it? Oh, don't worry. There's a new type of roof. They sell them like, um, pieces of a puzzle. Oh, that's smart! Yep. Mr. Fox and Woody chose a nice, big, red roof. Then, off they went to Woody's house. Mr. Fox got a ladder and climbed up. He started to fix the roof from the top. Now, all we need is to put the pieces together. All done. I'm coming down! Wow! It looks great! That way, all the water will slide down and the rain won't bother you again! So, uh, does that mean no more rain water will enter my house, Mr. Fox? Of course not! I guarantee it! Oh, I'm so happy! Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Oh, it was nothing. We all like living in a dry, warm place in the winter. Woody thanked Mr. Fox. For now, he could enjoy the warmth and comfort of his house. It was a nice warm autumn day. Mr. Fox was doing his morning exercises, sit-ups, push-ups, and running on the jungle track. A very refreshing start to the day. 
But then, unexpectedly, fog started to form, stopping any plans to enjoy the beautiful weather. Why is there fog covering the whole jungle? This is really strange. It's been happening a lot lately. I really hope everyone's all right. I should head home now. Oh, I think I should probably stay home today. I don't have my morning newspaper yet. And how would I? It's impossible to see. Aha! Wait a minute. I'll try calling Mr. Falcon. He'll definitely tell me what's going on. Mr. Fox held the phone and dialed Mr. Falcon's number. Oddly enough, there was no answer. I guess he's not home. Maybe I can reach him on his walkie-talkie. As Mr. Fox went to look for his walkie-talkie, he heard a loud knock on the door. Huh? I thought everyone stayed home in this weather. Who could it be? Puzzled, Mr. Fox went to open the door. He was taken by surprise. It was Jack the horse. He stood there holding a briefcase and looking smart. Jack was a very busy business horse. He was always rushing to keep a tight schedule. But today, something seemed off. He looked like something was bothering him. Oh, Jack, what a nice surprise! It's been a long time since we met. How have you been? Come in! Thank you, thank you, Mr. Fox. But I don't want to waste any more time. I want a very tight schedule. Of course. Can I bring you... I don't have time. I just needed to talk to you urgently, Mr. Fox. Have a seat, please. And as you know, time is money. Wait, wait. Hold on. First, tell me how you managed to get here in this bad weather. There's no time. I'm so busy. And I need your help with something important. All right, tell me what's the matter. Well, it all started last week. After long and weary negotiations, I won a bid for a gold mine located in the eastern part. Long story short, a gold mine obviously contains gold. But no matter how hard I looked, I found nothing but dirt. I was really frustrated. I was disappointed. And I knew that buying the mine was a mistake. What do you think, Mr. Fox? That's really strange. That mine is widely famous for its gold. I have an idea. We go there now and see what we can do. But wait here for a second. I need to bring something that will help us. Are you sure you don't want to drink anything? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Fox. But please hurry up. You know that time is money and I can't waste any, any more... more time. I get it. Just give me two minutes. Too much, Mr. Fox. Mm. So, Mr. Fox went to his room to change his clothes, trying to be quick. Then, he went to his workshop. He looked everywhere for his metal detector. When he found it, he took it and went back to his house, where Jack was standing there looking at his watch, with that usual impatient look on his face. Mr. Fox, why are you late? I have a really important meeting tonight at 8, you know. We're making a deal. And I don't want to waste any more time. You know that time, time is money. Time is money. I know that, Jack. But now we're wasting more time, aren't we? Right. Let's take my car, Mr. Fox. Okay. The fog had gradually started to clear away, and the vision became clearer and clearer. But as Mr. Fox was about to get in the car, something happened. What's that? What's going on? What happened? That's what we'll find out in the next episode. One day, the mighty eagle flew to his nest. All he wanted to do was rest. He felt bitter, he felt cold, 
He was really getting old. He knew he needed someplace new. So, off to Mr. Fox he flew. Please, come in. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Now tell me, how may I help you? Mr. Fox, I spent years in prosperity and glory, but I'm old now and tired. I can't live out there alone in that cold weather. Where do you live, Mr. Eagle? By the mountain top. Hmm, I see. The wind is strong there. I bet you catch a flu every now and then. Well, I didn't use to, but that's all in the past. Now I'm old and weary. I'm not what I used to be. Plus, I get so lonely up there. There is no one around to talk to, and no one to help me get better if I get sick. Why don't you come and live with us in the jungle? I looked around, but I couldn't find the right place for my huge nest. I'm too old to build a new one, and I can't really stay in someone's home. Mr. Fox kept thinking for a while. What could he do to help his dear old friend? I got it! I think I can help you build a new house. Have no worries. Mr. Fox quickly grabbed his toolbox and hopped into his car. He drove through the jungle while Mr. Eagle flew above him. He stopped in front of a tree that looked both old and firm, right in the middle of the jungle. Lots of animals and birds lived around here. What a beautiful place, Mr. Fox. Wait till you see what I have in mind for you. Mr. Fox started to work. He put a ladder against the tree and counted the steps up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. When he reached the tree branches, he opened his toolbox and took out some wooden plates. Then, he started putting them together. All I need now is some nails to make sure everything would be A-OK. -okay. We're almost done, Mr. Eagle. Can't wait to see what it will look like, Mr. Fox. Oh, my! What a wonderful treehouse! And it's all yours, Mr. Eagle. My own home. I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. You're most welcome. As Mr. Eagle got inside his new house and closed the door, he felt a happiness like never before. He knew Mr. Fox's idea was truly the best. For there was comfort, there was warmth. He felt really blessed. It was a beautiful spring morning. The sun was shining brightly. The sound of the birds woke Mr. Fox up. He 
changed his shirt, put on his tie, and his vest. Then he drank his tea. It was delicious. After reading a shop manager ad, he got into his car and drove off. Meanwhile, little Bingo Monkey was riding his bike through the jungle. He was having loads of fun. But suddenly, the bike slipped and little Bingo fell off. Are you okay, Bingo? Hang on, I'm coming! Yes, Mr. Fox, but my bike isn't. Oh, it looks like there's a problem with the tire. Don't worry, Bingo. I'm going to help you. Bingo, can you help me count how many nails I need? Of course. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there are nine, Mr. Fox. Okay, Bingo. Let me count how many I have in my toolbox. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, I'll get one more just in case he miscounted. So nine plus one. Ah, we need ten nails. That's easy. Okay, Bingo, it's all done. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. You've helped me a lot. Come on, give it a go. So once again, little Bingo rode along happily. It was a bright sunny day. Mr. Fox had had his breakfast and was now out doing his morning exercises. It was then when he saw Woody, who was passing by. Ah, Woody, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. I really missed you. I'm fine, Mr. Fox. I really missed you. I hope you're doing great. Hmm, why does he look so sad? I hope nothing bad has happened. You look a bit down, Woody. Is everything all right? Are you okay? Oh, Mr. Fox, I really need your help with an urgent matter. Don't you worry, my friend. Big or small, every problem has a solution. I assure you, everything will be all right. Oh, I know, Mr. Fox. I can always count on you. Let's go inside. I'll get you something to drink, and then we can sit down and you can tell me all about your problem. Hmm. Let's go. Woody followed Mr. Fox to his house. There, Mr. Fox prepared something special for Woody to help make him feel better. I made you some fresh orange juice. This will help you relax and cheer you up. Oh, you're very generous. I love orange juice. Thank you. Mr. Fox, I'm really sorry to bother you over and over again, but I had no choice. Oh, no worries, my friend. You know, Mr. Fox, I'm the jungle carpenter. My business has been growing recently, and now I have many customers. Yes, you're a hard worker. You deserve it. I used to build boats for fishermen. I got famous for my skills, especially after I built Nate the fisherman. 
the boat of his dreams. He went and told everyone in the jungle about it. They overwhelmed me with requests. That's fantastic. I'm really glad to hear that. But Nate came to me yesterday and asked if I could build him a ship. One big enough for him and all his friends. As he is planning to go on a fishing trip. It's for a special trip, he said. Yes, I've heard about that. Well, the problem is, I've never built a ship before. And I have no clue what kind of wood I'm supposed to use. I don't know what to do. How will I build him the ship he needs without the proper wood? Will you help me, Mr. Fox? Whoa, that's a serious problem. I'm gonna have to look through my books. Well, you're never too old to learn something new. I could use some time. I'll call you as soon as I find a solution. I will be waiting for your call. I know you'll be able to help me, Mr. Fox. After Woody left, Mr. Fox started his researches on shipbuilding. After hours and hours of hard work, he finally got it. Yes! I've got it! But there is something I need to check first. Mr. Fox went for a walk in the jungle, looking carefully at every tree on his path. Then he stopped in front of one and said, Yes! That's the one! Immediately, Mr. Fox took a paint bucket. He wanted to mark the tree, so he wouldn't forget which one it was. After that, he got into his car and drove off. When he got home, he called Woody to tell him that he had found the perfect solution to his problem. It only took a few minutes before... Oh, Woody, right on time! Come on, Mr. Fox, tell me! Okie dokie, come in! I finally figured it out! I never doubted you, Mr. Fox! I was sure you'd be the one to help me find an answer to my problem! Oh, don't mention it. Here you go. These are blueprints. They're guidelines that will help you learn how to build a ship easily. Woody started reading the blueprints thoroughly. He knew most of what was written in it. So he looked up and said, It's a lot easier than I thought. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox. Oh, um, but Mr. Fox, what about the materials that I'll need to build it? Here's a list of all the materials you'll need. And what about the kind of wood I should use, Mr. Fox? I did extensive reading, and I found out that our ancestors were famous for using teak in the process of building ships, as it's really stiff, strong, and it can also be shaped to have wide planks, which would help the ship to withstand the waves of the sea. But I... I know you don't know what teak is. Not everyone does, but come along. I think it would be better to show you the tree I found earlier in the jungle. Our jungle? Of course. Everything you dream of can be found in our beautiful jungle. Mr. Fox got into his car with Woody by his side and drove off. They headed towards the tree that Mr. Fox had marked earlier. Here's the tree. Huh? I have loads of that wood in my store, but I never knew that I could use it to build ships. I didn't know about teak either, but with a little bit of research, everything is open to you, my friend. Mr. Fox, I can't thank you enough. I'm really happy right now. I'll never forget what you've done for me. It's my pleasure, Woody. Now that I know what I should do, I'll go back and start building that ship for Nate as fast as I could. Thank you again, Mr. Fox. So, after helping his friend, Mr. Fox got into his car and drove away happily. You know, it's true what they say. A friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> <laughs>